Hi, bit of a different video today. We're going to be taking a look at this industrial PC motherboard that I got on eBay a little while ago and seeing if we can get it powered up and install some games on it possibly. This video is very different from my normal format in that it's going to be completely unscripted. I'm just going to make it up as I go along but it should be fairly interesting. We'll see where we can get to with this board and hopefully have some fun along the way. Now this motherboard, it's, a, it's in a form factor known as PC104 which was used in embedded industrial applications. So this might have been in a factory installed in like a electrical box running some heavy piece of equipment or you know doing data logging or that kind of thing but underneath it is actually just a normal pc motherboard in fact it's got what looks like an intel 386 cpu on it it should in theory be able to run anything that a normal 386 pc could i really like these industrial embedded computers because they're tiny but a lot of them actually make really good dos gaming pcs because they're designed to be as compatible with older dos applications as possible a lot of these factories don't want to just upgrade their you know hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment just because the pc's gone a little bit obsolete so let's see who makes it ampro computers inc 1995 it's in a form factor known as pc 104 um so it has this connector here that um is actually just an isa slot in a different form factor it's designed to be a bit more rugged than the typical isa connector because um, these are often installed in harsh environments and just places where dirt might get into the edge connector so th this is a standard pin header that'll be nice and robust and everything let's see what else it has some kind of presumably ram module also manufactured by ampro it looks like space for a bios chip but um it isn't there however underneath there is what looks like a flash chip so i'm guessing that's where the bios is so i'll find what i think is the manual for this or something very similar um this is as we discussed before pc 104 so um that seems fine down the edge we have j3 is a serial port that's com1 then this is a parallel port, J4. This one, J5, is a utility connector. I'm not really sure what that does, but I'm guessing like switches and stuff like that. Um, this apparently, interestingly enough, is an NPU connector or numeric processing unit. So I'm guessing you could install a, a kind of module that had the 80387 floating point coprocessor to this. So that's kind of interesting. This one up here, uh, J9, that's COM port 2. J7 here is DC power apparently. So this will be where we need to power the thing. Now, crucially, there doesn't seem to be a display connector. So this can't have any onboard VGA or, um, you know, graphics adapters. So that is a little bit of a problem if we want to output something. However, I do have a way around that, namely these. Now, remember I said that uh, PC-104 was just ISA in a different form factor. These are PC-104 to ISA adapters that I designed. You could actually buy these already, but they were extremely expensive. And to be honest, I think I made these for about 20 quid each so uh yeah this is a much more preferable solution using those i should be able to plug in this which is an isa vga card with a really crappy uh what is it an art realtek rtg 3105e no idea what that is but i don't want to waste any nice graphics cards on this thing so this will do for the moment first i suppose we need to figure out how to power it up there is no pinout on the power connector itself so according to the manual, pins 1 and 7 should be ground, pins 2 and 8 should be 5 volts, um, and pin 4 should be 12 volts. So um, I suppose we try powering it up very slowly and see if anything happens. Got this ATX power supply, it should provide everything we need. Uh, unfortunately not in the correct pinout, but what I can do, so if I just take the floppy connector from this ATX power supply, should be able to wire up using some of these male to female DuPont wires straight into the power. Blue for ground yellow for 12 and green for plus five now obviously i'm not just going to plug this straight in i'm going to verify the voltages get my multimeter voltage mode and let's see what sort of voltage we're getting out of these pins now yellow should be plus five volts oh sorry yellow should be 12. <laughs> that's good yellow is indeed 12 and green is indeed five great wonderful now we just have to hook them up to the unit. So ground, so that's pin one. Green, we decided was plus five, so that's pin two. Four is plus 12, so that's yellow. One, two, three, four. All right, let's plug it in and see if it blows up. No explosion, nothing getting warm. I think we might be all right. Okay, cool. Now I suppose we try connecting a graphics card to it, see what happens. Pin's got slightly bent in storage, <laughs> that's not so good. Uh, I think so. I think it's going in. Ah. There we go. Almost sexual. 
Um, right, so let's stick the VGA card in it. Uh, which way around does it go? It goes in this way. Right. So now we have a VGA card installed in it. Right, I'll connect it to a monitor and see what happens. Right, power it up. Whole lot of nothing on screen. Although actually, interestingly, the, the PC did detect a signal, it just there's nothing on the screen. Now, it is possible it does need that negative 12 volt supply. Now, I'm just going to steal that from the ATX power connector by poking this <laughs> DuPont style wire into it. So we'll see, that goes to pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's there. All right, let's try powering it up now. Hey, look at that. Oh, I think we have something. Sorry for the shaky cam. Okay, so it's just going into a boot loop, basically, because we don't have any media installed, but that's fine. Uh, now to connect it to a hard drive or something. Actually, before we connect the boot device up, we'll need a keyboard, really. So what I've done is I've gone raking in my box of miscellaneous industrial PC parts, and I found this PS2 to pin header adapter. I don't imagine it'll go straight in without some modification, so let's take a look at the pinout for the utility port, which is where the keyboard plugs into. Okay, so it looks like the utility port which I now can't really get at very easily. Got a better idea, rather than using that design, that old design of PC-104 connector that kind of covers up the whole motherboard, I'm gonna use this one that should mean that the ISA board lies outside of the footprint of the motherboard, so we'll still have access to it. There we go, oh, yeah, great. All right, um, next thing, put the VGA card back in. It's a really tight ISA slot, a bit, a little bit annoying. But now you can see we still have access to most of the important ports here, so that's that's pretty good. All right, now I just need to get a keyboard. I'm going to use this wireless keyboard that I tend to use for stuff like this. Just makes things a bit handier. Here's the wireless receiver. Plug that into the our new PS2 port. Cool. All right, let's boot it up and just make sure nothing's broken. Okay, I'm just going to boot it up. Ah, uh, here we go. Now control escape for setup. Oh, we're in setup. Amazing. So we have a working keyboard. We have a working computer. Cool. All right. Um, right. Let's see if we can get. DOS running on this thing. I need to add a boot device to some description. Now, when adding a boot device to this thing, we are gonna be faced with the problem that this board doesn't actually have any connectors to connect a boot device to. There's no IDE, there's no floppy connector. This uh, controller chip here does actually have a floppy controller in it, but there's no connector to connect it to. But nonetheless, I have a solution. Um, it is one of these XT IDE hard drive controller cards for which we'll need to add another one of these adapters in um, so we have to use this one after all but that's okay I think we've got everything we need on the motherboard connected this goes in here like this I think <laughs> it's all starting to get very unstable and floppy <laughs> Dear. considering the size of that original motherboard this has kind of expanded out a little bit hasn't it um, but nonetheless we shall persevere we need to add a boot device. Now, traditionally you'd use a hard drive, I suppose, but they're a bit old fashioned. So I'm gonna go with a SD card to IDE converter, which are extremely useful. Here it is. Um, I just got this on eBay. I don't know who the manufacturer is or anything like that, but uh, yeah, basically it's just got a, a SD card on one end and a, oops, IDE interface on the other end. So yeah, let's just try connecting that. Okay, here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, starting MS DOS. Oh, oh, looks pro looks promising. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. Nice one. Okay, we have DOS. Uh, what do we have? So I'm going to try start with top bench just to see if it seems to be uh, behaving as it's meant to. Well, inboard three eight six. Yeah, it seems to be. Yeah, seems to be about right. This is Phil's Computer Labs benchmark pack. Now, probably most of these won't work on a three eight six. Like for example, I don't think there's enough memory for Doom. Yes, 3.7 megabytes of total free memory. So yeah, we've only got three megabytes in this thing. Well, let's see what kind of CPU it is. Classic 386. All right, system information. Let's see what it says. Yeah, so, oh, it says it's an Ampro, so we've got that good. Um, IBM Meteor, yeah, 80386SX, 24 megahertz. Yeah, cool. That looks good. Uh, oh, it's quite slow compared to a 386DX33, but then this is a 386SX24. <laughs> So that's fair enough. Now, I suppose the next thing to try is some games on it, but um, before we do that, I want to install a sound card. Yes, I'm actually gonna try and shoehorn yet another circuit board onto this thing. Now, I've actually run out of PC-104 to ISA adapters, so I can't plug a normal ISA sound card in, but what I do have is this 
Now this is a PC-104 sound card I designed for another project called the Wii 86. They used the PC-104 board to build a tiny little DOS gaming PC. Now this is a prototype version, you can see that it's got an EEPROM bodged onto there, but that, that's absolutely fine, it should work fine. So let's give it a shot. Now unfortunately I snipped all the pins off the bottom to fit it in the enclosure I wanted, so it, this is actually going to have to go underneath everything else. So <laughs> here we go, this is getting more precarious by the second. Yep, there we go. And all we need now is a sound output. There we go. Sound output to my amplifier. Right. All right, let's power her up. Well, it made a popping noise. That's a good start. All right, okay. Uh, it's still booting. That's a good thing. Uh, drivers. Unisound. Now, this is a universal sound driver that can do all kinds of things. But in this case, we're looking for a crystal audio. There we go. Crystal mixer. Yeah, excellent. We're working. Let's try a game. Hmm. Oh, Sound Blaster, yeah. Hey! Never been so happy to hear the Nazi music. Whoa, sounds quite louder than the music. I see a bad guy. To be honest, it's been so long since I played Wolfenstein 3D, I have no idea how you get around or anything, so. Oh, I saw a bad guy. Well, it feels kind of bad killing a dog, but... All right, I think we can safely say that works. That seems to be playing very well. Uh, I'm going to try another game. Um, I'm less sure that this game's going to work, but we'll see. Oh, bloody hell. Was there a setup program for Jazz Jackrabbit? Select sound card. Okay, uh, what do we have? I think it's a Sound Blaster Pro that the crystal card emulates. 220... I think it's 5? Uh, oh, what have we got? We've got a 386. <laughs> Wow. I've never seen the Jazz Jackrabbit intro animation go so slowly. Or the audio sound this crap. I think it must be like running at 11 kilohertz or something. Oh, the frame rate's really, really slow. Yeah, the frame rate, is, this is not running well, it has to be said. Still, for a 386, pretty good. Considering you got like parallax scrolling and all kinds of other stuff going on, it's a... Pretty impressive game overall. I mean, this is just about playable. I wonder if it would run faster with the sound disabled, actually, because it must be using a lot of uh, processor time just processing all that sampled music. I'm going to try uh, Duke Nukem 2 now, because it doesn't need a very powerful PC either. Oh, music, that's a good sound. <laughs> Intro animation running quite slowly. I am back. <laughs> all right, yeah, frame rate's still pretty slow. It's not unplayable, but it's still, it's not much fun either. Yeah, well, at least it's working. I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's it for today's experiment into PC-104 motherboards. Now, would I recommend this particular Ampro 386 board as a general DOS gaming PC? Well, <laughs> obviously not, because I had to add, well, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six extra boards onto it to make it useful. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's not uncommon for PC-104 motherboards not to have sound on them, but for them not to have graphics and and hard drive support, that makes it pretty much useless for most things. So uh, really, this is just intended as a curiosity, really. But yeah, um, I'm hoping to make this possibly a regular series, so if you want to see me explore some of the other weird industrial embedded computers I've got in my collection, then please leave a comment or like the video or subscribe. You know, you know how this whole thing works. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>